So anyways, I know only a little bit about the uh, the arts. I like watching pictures and, you know, yeah. going to plays, but I don't know anything else about that. But I want to know is, how did you get started in the EV world? Um, what what was the impetus? Yeah, because that was very much US-based. So I did a show for 10 years called, which in the UK was called Scrap Heap Challenge. In America, it was called Junkyard Wars. Yeah, Junkyard. So I presented that presented Junkyard Wars in the States. So for, I think it was four years, four years, yeah, we made the shows in California. So we there was a, a British production company with a base in California, a lot of Americans, a lot of Canadian camera, camera operators, I've got to tell you. But they were, and so we made it, it was exactly the same format show that we made in the UK, but it was with American, you know, it was a, it was a um, engineering game show. Yeah, the closest yeah. description. And uh, the uh, while that was going on, I just met all these people who were either consultant engineers that were working with us or in the teams. And they'd say things like, "Oh, I'm, I'm, de I'm developing electric drivetrains." And it, and it, it, it's so hard to wind your brain back to that, but it meant it meant uh, forklift trucks or um, disability vehicles or, you know, stuff you'd see in a factory. It didn't mean car. And I didn't understand what they were talking about or why they were, and they were doing battery management software, which at the time just sounded so dull. And, so, or, and they would be working for companies like AC Propulsion. This is pre-Tesla, you know, there wasn't yeah, a yeah, Tesla yeah. then. This is like 2000, 2002, 3, 4, 5, so that period. So I met, I mean, and I don't know who those people were now. I know I met um, is it an English guy called with right, who did right speed. So what was his name? Uh, he built a very fast, early electric, very early electric car. So we actually met him in the, in the UK, first of all, and that he was involved in the very early days of Tesla and was such a difficult man. I don't want to <laughs> slander him, but I'm not surprised. He didn't last very long there. He, was, he wasn't a, a, an easy person to get on with. But clearly very talented. So that kind of, it sort of sparked an interest, but I couldn't really understand it. And then I had a ride in a, when we were filming, the, the teams made monster trucks. Yeah. That was the challenge that week. So one of them I know, I remember did uh, one mile to the US gallon. <laughs> you know, ridiculous thing. Yeah. Had a, I think a, a sort of 10 liter of truck engine in it. And it was just crazy thing. But while we were filming that, while we were filming the test of that, it was in Ventura Raceway, which is just north of Los Angeles. And there was a drag strip next to us. And there were all these, you know, and we could hear it in the distance and it occasionally interrupted our recording because it would be, a, you know, a muscle car or a, a Ferrari or a Porsche roaring up the, the, the quarter mile. But then realized one of, there was this little yellow thing <laughs> that, was, that they were racing against. And, and in the lunch break, one of the guys came over and said, do you want to have a ride? We love junkyard wars. Do you want to come and have a ride in this car? And that was the T0, which was a test car, a test bed for AC propulsion motors. And this was 2002. And it had Nokia laptop batteries stripped out of, a, of, of not, literally in their plastic casing but put in a box really neatly. Not, it wasn't rubbish like we did on Scrappy, but it was beautifully put together. But it was in a wooden box in the back of the car, all wired up. And then there was a like a desktop PC that was running the software stuff. And they sort of showed me. But I mean, you know, I'm looking at this utterly baffled. Where's the engine? <laughs> Where's the fuel line? Where's the carburetors? You know, what the hell is that thing? This is like a vacuum cleaner. Didn't make any sense. But that car did a sub four second, well, a sub three second, not to 60. But I think it had a range of like eight miles. <laughs> yeah, well, all that, it was, yeah, all it was yeah. Well, up. where do you want to yeah. go? You want to go fast or do you want to, yeah. you know, yeah. And you we're know. only going a quarter of a mile. So it had enough <laughs> exactly. to get up there and come yeah. back and then do it again, yeah. you know. So, so that, and even then I went, that's weird. Why would you go to all that effort? It felt like a bit of a sort of hobby uh, science project. It didn't didn't feel like a plausible alternative at all, you know. It didn't and it didn't make me immediately think, oh, electric cars are the future. But it was that combination of that, and then one night I got a lift home with one of the crew, very late at night in a Prius. Well, we didn't have the Prius hadn't arrived in this country then. I think that was two thousand 
2002. So it was a, a very unremarkable looking Japanese car covered in dust. We were in the desert and then they drove me back to Los Angeles. And when we were at some traffic lights on Sunset Boulevard, uh, about two in the morning, the lights changed and this car just went like that. And it was, the, I hadn't noticed before, but it was the weirdest thing, made no noise, didn't go, vroom, didn't do anything. And I went, how, what's that? It was a woman driving and she went, oh, it's a hybrid. And <laughs> I can't tell you how that meant nothing. So my dad and my granddad grew hybrid apple trees. So they would oh, yeah. well, have an old go. tree, they cut it off and they yeah. tie a new bit to it and it would right. grow into a different tree. And right. that's the only time I'd come across hybrid. So I had no idea. So that really did intrigue me. I was fascinated what, why they bothered. So I then learned about the, uh, the EPA, the uh, California Air Resource Board, all the legislation that had gone through in California, the pollution, which I was aware of. You know, in that I first went to Los Angeles in the early 80s. And the, the, my, I just remember my eyes stinging and my nose hurt because of the, you know, the millions of, of massive petrol cars with no catalytic converters, leaded petrol, all that stuff. And then all that legislation came out of California, really. And then the, you then realized that the, that, you know, the, the development of electric cars came out of the computer industry, really, more than the automotive industry. It didn't come out of Detroit, did it? It came out of no. Silicon Valley. Well, industry. actually, it did. Um, I worked well, on, both, on the yeah. EV1, and, uh, yeah. and uh, that was in – we started that project in either 89 or 90, and, uh, and then – we left. <laughs> we didn't really want to leave, but anyways, uh, we were uh, unceremoniously uh, pitched out uh, by uh, by the guy who's in charge of purchasing at the time, because oh, we can do that ourselves. So okay, fine. So we left, and then uh, and then they fired Lloyd Royce, and they fired Bob Stemple, and they killed the EV one as as quickly as they possibly could because it didn't really work with Wall Street. But it was, if, if General Motors wouldn't have listened to Wall Street, if they'd have kept Bob Stemple and Lloyd Rice, yeah. pff, there would have never been a, a Tesla. World. Never in a million no, years. No. Never. You're right. You're absolutely right. And I mean, that's what I didn't know then. Because I'm, I'm assuming, so when I would have been in, you know, you know, six months around that in Los Angeles in about, say, 2000, I think the last time I was there doing that was 2005. Well, the EV1 was already around then, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I would think. yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I don't remember here. I didn't hear anything about that until years later when I saw who killed the electric car. And I went, oh, you know, it all kind of clicked together then. It was sort of very much that. Uh, it was such an extraordinary story. How that. Yeah. Uh, how that. Well, we told them, uh, put our name in and we'll sue the piss out of you. Because we were yeah. leading that thing. And uh, the lady who wrote that, or actually the writer who talked to the lady who basically said it was her little tell all story. Uh, she was not our favorite person on that product uh, and that project. So <clears throat> we didn't, I, I wanted nothing to do with our name being in that book. Yeah. Right. To do, Cause have you seen the movie? Have you seen who killed the electric car? The no, film? I know who killed it, oh. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I, and uh, I, I was told, you know who killed it, but really it was Wall Street. Wall Street did not see yes. any any. There was no future in electric vehicles. Wall Street knows, and and you know, have you ever talked to a, a, a an analyst, a financial analyst about electric vehicles? Oh boy, that's uh, that's an afternoon. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I uh, 